Welcome to Dear SQL DBA, a podcast for SQL Server database administrators. Today, I'm going to talk through a problem that I came across when I was testing sample queries. I was writing some code to reproduce a user question for an upcoming episode. And I came across this weird thing. There was a bunch of garbage in my execution plan. And by garbage, I mean that the execution plan had a whole bunch of stuff that I didn't ask for. It had a nested loop and a bunch of operators that I didn't expect. And it also had this warning on the select, a warning that there could be some query plan problems like bad query plan quality. And it was because of a column that I didn't ask for either. And I got really puzzled. And it took me a while to figure out what was going on. And, it, you know, I, I usually start the podcast with a question. This, this adventure I had had a lot of questions in it. I mean, at first I was like, am I actually querying a table? Like, I thought this was a table, but maybe it's a view. No, it was, it was actually a table. I, I checked four times. And, and then I, I was like, well, am, am I asking for a weird computed column? that's doing something I don't understand. And nope, no, there was no computed column. And, and then I started asking if I was actually awake. <laughs> I have actually had dreams about SQL Server bugs and, and features before. And I, you know, I kind of pinched myself and decided I was actually awake. And, and then I, I started wondering, you know, do I actually know anything about SQL Server? <laughs> I mean, this was a real, this is a really basic select query. So I was just, do maybe I actually really don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> and this is, this is one of those things where, you know, imposter syndrome and that, that sense that maybe everyone else knows things that you don't, it, it really does happen to you, to everyone. And after going through all of this stuff, I said, look, I'm just going to look through this execution plan really carefully. And I bet that I can figure out what's going on from the plan itself. So I calmed down and I proceeded to step through the plan. It did the trick and I figured out what the garbage was in that plan. And I realized that I, I actually got, where I was having fun doing it. I realized that it would be a really good thing to talk about in the podcast. Just this, this example, because this process of, having an execution plan really puzzle me and working my way through it, it's that process is something I use all the time. And it's one of the more valuable processes in my career. So let's let's step back and talk about uh, the weirdness. If you want to reproduce this weird garbage in the plan yourself, you totally can. I was using the wide world importer sample database that Microsoft gives away free on GitHub for SQL Server 2016. You can grab that for free and download it and download it and restore it. And the query is just this. You're going to love the complexity of the query. It is select customer name from sales.customers. That is the entirety of the query. Select one column. That columnar is customer name. That columnar, that column is in Vercare 100. It's not computed, like I said, it's just a, a Unicode variable character column that can be up to 100. And it's from the sales.customers table, which is normal row store table. It's not Hecaton, it's not anything weird. So for a select query like this, right? Like I want one column from the table. I don't even have any predicates. I would, I would expect that my execution plan is gonna be really simple. Like I haven't even asked for any ordering. So, and I want all the rows. So it's going to do probably a scan of a table and there's going to be a select operator that it returns to. Right. So I expect like two nodes in my plan. And when I looked at the execution plan, I had 20 nodes. There's this whole branch of the plan that had a lot of operators in it. It's got concatenation. It's got filters. It's got compute scalers. There are clustered index scans down there and index seeks. There is all sorts of business going on in this plan. If you'd, if you'd like to see the plan, 
you don't have to, you can totally, I'm going to talk the way through this. You don't have to see the plan, but if you like plans, I do have a copy of the plan on the blog post that goes with this episode on littlekendra.com. If you search for a uh, Kendra little garbage, <laughs> that might get you to the post because the, I am titling this, what is that garbage uh, in my execution plan? So there's all these 20 nodes and you know, hovering over the select operator, there's this little warning sign that shows up on the plan in management studio over the select operator, like warning, look at me. When you hover over the select operator, the warning says, hey, there is a type conversion and an expression in your query. It's doing an implicit conversion on the sales territory column. And it may be affecting like the query plan choice because it may not be estimating the number of rows that come back right. Well, wait, so the implicit conversion is on the sales territory column. My query, once again, is select customer name from sales.customers. I'm not saying anything at all about the sales territory column. So what is that about? And I, I sat and I thought about it and I didn't know. So when I am really confused in an execution plan, here's what I do. I mean, I do look at that, you know, any warnings on the select operator, but sometimes they may just mystify me. Like in this case, I know what an implicit conversion is, but I didn't ask for that column. So start at the top right of the plan. When I'm confused, I like to start at the beginning, like, you know, do not pass go, do not collect $100. The beginning is the top right of the query plan. To me, that's the driving table, that's where the plan sort of flows from. And at the top right of my plan, there is actually what I would expect. There is a clustered index scan on the sales.customers table. All right, well, that's where it's gonna get my customer names. So I hover over that operator and it'll tell you what columns it's outputting from that operator. And it says that the output columns include customer name. Now that's good because that's the column I asked for. But it also says that it is outputting a second column. It is also outputting delivery city ID. I didn't ask for delivery city ID at all. So now, there are two call. There's an implicit conversion on sales territory, and my table is outputting delivery city ID, and I didn't ask for it. So that's fine. Okay, what are you? The next question is, what are you going to do with delivery city ID? And my guess is, whatever you're doing with it involves this implicit conversion with sales territory. But you know, we're, that's coming up. So looking to the left, the next operator to the left of the clustered index scan, it, you know, there's an arrow that points right to it. It is a nested loop operator. For rows that come out of that top right operator, it's gonna go run the nested loop. And when I hover over the nested loop operator, it tells me two things. There, it lists the output list, what columns will come out of the nested loop. Well, it tells me that the customer name is gonna come out of the nested loop. Now that's, that's good, because that is the one column I asked for. It has another thing called outer references. Like what, how am I using, what am I using down to follow the nested loop? The outer reference is delivery city ID. It had to get delivery city ID from my clustered index scan because it had to run this nested loop. Now I still have no idea why it's running this nested loop, but at least I know what column is involved. And I start looking down at the operators in this. There's quite a few, you know, branches down there that are connected. And I can see that at the end of the branches, you know, at the right of the branches, it's doing some data access. Like it's pulling things from the cities and the state provinces table. And I could start hovering over those and look at their predicates. And that, that would be fine. That's an approach I take too. What I really want to do is kind of browse around this big thing and figure out what's going on in there because I have no idea. There's also a bunch of filter operators in this case. I'm like, oh, well, I'm going to hover over these filter operators and look for their predicates. Because, okay, essentially, if you've got a filter operator, what are you filtering for? 
Similarly, if you don't have filter operators on things like an index seek or an index scan, you can hover over them and look for predicates that are hidden, you know, as properties of those data access operations that are essentially like filters that have been tucked in there. But I actually had filter operators. So I hovered over the filters in each branch of the plans and they said things like, I am running is role member DB owner or is role member sale or session context of sales territory. Hey, there's where sales territory came in. And original login value, is that something? So looking at all these filters, a little, little light bulb went on. I, I have a piece of information. This is security garbage. Like <laughs> I've got this garbage in my plan. Looking at my filters, okay, this is related to some piece of security that is like magically tacked onto this table so that when I just run a basic innocent select query, it starts checking all this stuff about permissions. So I am, I am not ashamed at all to say that I didn't know what this was right away. There were so many features released in SQL Server 2016, and many of them were security features that I really literally sort of sat and I said, okay, there's a bunch of security features. There's, you know, the, <laughs> I started kind of iterating through them. And then I was like, oh, oh, there's something about row level security that happened in here. And I didn't really learn that much about it because there's a bunch of gotchas with, if people have access to the database. So the little light bulb went on. I did a little searching and I looked it up and I figured out that in fact, row level security has been implemented in wide world, uh, the importers database, that sample database from Microsoft, which is the whole point of a sample database, right? Is that you use the features and that row level security was on the table that I'm querying. The way that row level security works is that you create a table valued function in your SQL server, in your database that defines, you know, what permissions happen. And then you create a security policy that hooks up that inline table valued function to a table. And you basically say, and you define it and how it works in your security policy. When people are working with this table, I want you to add the requirements in my table valued function into their plan, right? Even though they didn't ask for it in their query, even though they aren't using a view, row level security adds in those predicates. And there is actually an easy way when you're looking at your execution plan to tell if row level security has been responsible <laughs> for parts of that plan. If you click on the select operator in the graphical execution plan and you look at the properties pane, so you got to right click somewhere on the, the plan and say view properties, get that properties window opened up and then click on the select operator. There's a lot of properties. So you got to scroll down. One of the properties says security policy applied. If security policy applied is in the list and says true, row level security kicked in and inserted a bunch of, let's not call it garbage, let's call it quality code <laughs> into your execution plan. Now this is kind of a big deal because of course, changing around your query can change your execution plan. In, you know, I was running a really simple query and I got confused. Imagine if you have a more complex query even just figuring out if you would have a faster plan without the row level security is going to take you some, some legwork, right? So the, the cool news is now that I know this, if I see a nested loop to a big branch of things I don't understand in a plan, I now know that I can think, aha, maybe it's row level security. One quick way to check is to look at the properties on the select operator in the plan and see, does it say uh, security policy applied equals true in the properties? Also hovering over those filter statements and looking as is it security-ish stuff is kind of a, a quick way as well. You can also in Management Studio in the database, 
there is a whole under the security bucket slash folder, you can expand that and look at the security policies and all that good stuff. In terms of row level security itself, I've, I've kind of said, hey, well, there's a reason I didn't learn a whole lot about it. Now, I, I'm going to just tell you, I, I, like I said, I'm pretty ignorant about this, but I have one, you know, like great approach for security related stuff that stood me well in my entire career. And, and the, the technique that I use is, is to find someone who knows more about security than I do. In this case, that person is Aaron Bertrand, and he has written a terrific article over on the MS SQL Tips site called SQL Server 2016, Row Level Security Limitations, Performance, and Troubleshooting. So if you're like, hey, should I use row level security? And if I do, what issues do I need to be aware of? Check out Aaron's article on row level security uh, limitations, and then you can figure out if the limitations would impact you, if your use case is is good for it and if it's a good fit. So the the real reason I wanted to talk through this today was that I mean I look at execution plans a lot. And I have looked at execution plans a lot for years. When I first started tuning performance in SQL Server, I I would get stuck all the time and I would get really frustrated with plans and I would stop looking at them. But I did you know, I just put them down for a little bit and then I'd pick them back up and ask questions and I'd research. And I'm, I'm really glad that I stuck with it because as confusing as execution plans are, the answers to the questions that we're looking for are so often in the execution plan. We just have to kind of calm down and keep on looking through the plan. And really, you know, like as with many things in life, you've just got to keep on swimming. The way I usually look at execution plans is start at the top right, step your way through it, and when there's a whole section of the plan that confuses you, kind of take a technique of take a short time and kind of browse around the different operators, make notes on what they do, step back and kind of ask what does this big branch do, what part of the code does it remind me of, and eventually with that and some internet searching, you will get to the answer. Thanks so much for joining me for this episode of Dear SQL DBA. I am Kendra Little and oh, I would love it if you've been enjoying Dear SQL DBA. I would really appreciate your review on iTunes. Reviewing the show on iTunes helps more people find out about the show and it helps me keep it going. Thanks a bunch. I'll see you soon.